the root of human behavior. We imitate the desires of others from the first moment that we're born. And as groups, it's even more powerful. This gets to the heart of the scapegoat mechanism. The more people begin to engage in this mimetic process, the easier it is to convince ourselves of the guilt of the scapegoat. People make scapegoats when there's some fundamental truth that they don't want to acknowledge, that they don't want to acknowledge. So a person or a society can transfer the blame onto them and expel or eliminate them, expel or eliminate them. Scapegoating feels good because it's a way of protecting ourselves. Somebody else has to pay the price for our sins. We have a natural tendency to transfer blame, expel or eliminate them. The scapegoat mechanism never happens intentionally. It's always subconscious. If we thought that we were scapegoating, it wouldn't produce the catharsis. All it takes is somebody to stand out a little bit. They broke some taboo. They said something that was threatening to the social order. Scapegoats happen on a micro level all the time. Steve Bartman, the Cubs fan, who was scapegoated for causing the Cubs to lose. Scapegoats are made in the news media and in politics practically every day. We make a scapegoat and 24 hours later we need a new one. Who's your scapegoat? People that are bearing the weight for the rest of us. Who's your scapegoat? People make scapegoats when there's some fundamental truth that they don't want to acknowledge. Who's your scapegoat? Truth, don't want to acknowledge. Truth, who's your scapegoat? Don't want to acknowledge. Who's your scapegoat? Don't want to acknowledge. Who's your scapegoat? Don't want to acknowledge.